Hello everyone, my name is Gabriella and you're welcome to another episode of the Sankofa Pan African series. So this topic is one I am so excited to talk about. It's fashion. We're going to be looking at Africa's impact on fashion. We all know that fashion encompasses clothing and jewelry. So let's talk about African clothing. Now African clothing is traditional clothing worn by the peoples of Africa. African clothing and fashion is a diverse topic that can provide a look into different African cultures. Now, African clothing has a very beautiful history. This history is thought to stretch back to about 75,000 years. Although tracking the evolution of African styles can be difficult, Asian art gives us hints about the textiles that were used. Egyptian art suggests that flax, flax weaving actually, began in 5000 BC. There are even hieroglyphics as old as 3000 BC that show drawings of blooms. Now, clothing were usually made out of animal skin, fur, feathers, and bark cloth. But this wasn't actually suitable for the very hot conditions that, you know, is uh, particular to Africa. It's believed that these clothing materials were mainly used in the form of aprons that would have been tied around the waist and robes were draped across the body. Later, clothing materials like cotton were used for cloth making. In West Africa, woven fibers from the 800s have been discovered in Nigeria. In Mali as well, cotton fragments were found that have been traced back to the 1000s. Reports of Kanka Musa, also known as Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca in the 1300s, mentioned that he and his group were dressed in cotton woven with gold threads. I mean, how amazing is that? Ibn Battuta, who was a Moroccan explorer, documented weavers in Timbuktu and Mali also in the 1300s. And by the 1400s, Nigeria's dying pits were celebrated by those living as far north as the Mediterranean coast. African fashion varies from brightly colored textiles to abstractly embroidered robes to colorful beaded bracelets and necklaces. Since Africa is such a large and diverse continent, traditional clothing differs throughout each country. For example, many countries in West Africa have distinct regional dress styles that are the products of long-standing textile crafts in weaving, dyeing, and printing. However, these traditions can still coexist with Western styles. In Northeastern Africa, particularly in Egypt, traditional women's clothing styles have been influenced by Middle Eastern cultures. This can be exemplified by the simply embroidered jalabiya, which are similarly worn in the Gulf states. The jalaba worn in North West Africa shares similar properties with the Grand Bubu, the Dashiki, and the Senegalese kaftan. Now in Nigeria, women wear head ties. In Sahelian Africa, the dashiki, Sangalese kaftan, and the grand bubu are worn more permanently, though not exclusively. The bagamafini, for instance, is worn in Mali. The beautiful dashiki is highly stylized and is rendered with an ornate V-shaped collar. In contrast, the grand bubu is simpler, even more so the jalaba. Though the Jalaba's colors you know, are usually very impressive, especially among the Tuareg, they are known for their dyed indigo robes. In East Africa, particularly in Tanzania, the Kanzu is a traditional dress worn by Swahili-speaking men. Recently, in Southern Africa, distinctive shirts are worn. For instance, South Africa is known for the Madiba shirt, whereas Zimbabwe is known for the Safari shirt. In the Horn of Africa, the entire varies by country. In Ethiopia, men wear Ethiopian suits and women wear the Habisha kemis. In Somalia, men wear the kemis with a small cap called Okufiad. But there's a large contrast, there's sometimes a large contrast in African fashion between urban and rural areas. Urban societies typically are usually typically exposed to trade and the changing world while it takes more time for new Western trends to get to rural areas. What do African clothing and accessories mean to Africans? As with many traditions on the continent, clothing holds a special significance among various African cultures. The patterns created by the brightly colored threads often represent common motifs, religious beliefs, and political commentary. In some parts of Africa, the colors are of particular significance as they interpret the meaning of the pattern with red symbolizing death, 
green meaning fertility, white expressing purity, and blue signifying love. The imagery and clothing or traditional attire worn in most African countries has different meanings. At funerals or weddings, different attires are worn with different symbols. For example, in Nigeria, during wedding celebrations, it is common to be able to distinguish between the groom's family and the bride's family by their attires. Chiefs, traditional healers, older men and women also wear clothing with different symbols to show their status or positions in society. A distinctive feature of traditional African dresses is its use of festive colors, intricate patterns, and figurative symbols to communicate meaning. These garments, these garments are much more than mere adornment. They are used to praise political heroes, to, com to commemorate historical events, and to assert social identities. In addition to pictorial symbols, colors, and writings on the surface of the cloth, Often the cut of a particular African garment can convey meaning. Traditional dress for women includes various pieces that signify age and marital status. In Zimbabwe, for example, a woman wearing a head wrap and a long wraparound skirt is likely young and unmarried. If she adds a, of, a stretch of cloth around her midsection, that is often used to carry babies, indicating that she is married. Color plays a crucial role in African fashion. The garments often come in different colors of red and black for traditional healers, while gold and blues signify royalty. African wax prints, also known as Ankara, have become increasingly popular across the continent and beyond. They are omnipresent common materials for clothing in Africa, especially in West Africa. They industrially produce colorful cotton clothes with batik-inspired printing. The popularity of African fashion trends is largely due to its uniqueness, both statement colors and prints. Now we know that African fashion has not stayed in Africa. African form and design have stimulated the creativity of European fashion designers for centuries. They have been used as inspiration for clothing designs, fashion accessories, and jewelry, and they include ethnic motifs. Kitenge is colorful pieces of fabric. It has an edging on only one side and is made especially for sarongs. In such clothes, the strict geometry is combined with different African symbols, images of plants and animals. Kitenge is often used not only for clothing, but also for accessories such as headbands and purses. Animal prints, fringe, bright colors, tribal patterns, and gold shades, all these ethnic motifs are reflected in the collections of many European designers. Another African fashion piece that has made it into mainstream fashion is the turban. In African fashion, it is customary to wear a painted silk headscarf or shawl in the manner of a turban. For the first time, French fashion designer Paul Paré has brought turbans into mainstream fashion, inviting the French to use it instead of the frilly hats. Yves Saint Laurent brings his headpiece to the, to the European runways and turned it into an elegant garment. It was really elegant, by the way. For several years, the turban is <laughs> one of the main beauty trends, not only on the catwalks, but also in everyday life. Now let's talk about decorative coins. A few years ago, many designers appreciated the beauty and uniqueness of necklaces with decorative coins and made it the main decoration in their shows. Following the leading designers, mass market brands also added a variety of necklaces to their collections. Once, this oldest decoration from Africa pointed to social status of, of women. The more coins there were on a necklace, the richer the woman was. All these trends are reflected in the new Dior Cruise 2020 collection, which is almost entirely devoted to the various cultures of Africa. The collection highlights the inextricable linking between local African looks and global fashion. This is also evident by the ethnic patterns on fabrics, made in traditional African techniques, and rhythmic ornaments with emphasis on the local flora. And now, a personal favorite of mine, Kari shells. Kari shells are not just a good look, they are a symbol of traditional African spirituality, a tool used to help increase fertility, 
a gift from the ocean goddess and have been a currency that date back thousands of years. The cowrie shell was, first a sim was the first symbol of money and wealth known to mankind. In ancient Africa, the cowrie was used much like world currencies are used today. They were wealth and they were traded for goods and services. Cowrie shells have become quite the social statement. We can adorn our bodies with them, tie them in our hair, and sew them in our clothes. They can also be used in jewelry, such as earrings and necklaces. Cowrie shell jewelry appeared in Prada's fall collection in 2017, and again on Iman Hammam for Vogue's June 2017 issue. The fashion trend in Africa is filled with diversity and uniqueness. It is definitely here to stay. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Please give us a thumbs up, share with your contacts, and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.